Okay guys, so in this one we are going to be taking a look at electric motorcycles. Uh, I know the guy that had this one, been used for half an hour in a grass pitch, been put in the shed for over a year, still in immaculate condition. So, the charger, the owner doesn't know where the original charger is, doesn't even know what it looks like. Uh, he's tried putting a charger, he snapped off the pin that you plug the charger and he took the wires off that and tried charging it through the wires and said the charger just wouldn't accept the charge whatsoever. So to him the bike is completely done and dusted and no use. So purchased it for £45. Let's get this thing going for free. So if you have an electric vehicle like this, or even one of the little plastic power wheels or kids ride on toys, this is what you're going to want to do in order to fix it. So, to start off, there is a bolt here for the plastics and one on the other side. And also there's two bolts up and underneath that keep the seat on. And they're on some bars underneath. So we'll get the plastics off, see what we need to do from there. Okay, so I've moved the two bo removed the two bolts from the sides and the two from up and underneath on the seat. Now, that's the seat off, and we'll get the plastics off. The plastics are held on. Mine has a battery gauge up here, which just happens to be showing absolutely nothing anyway. But there's one clip that needs to be taken apart, and the plastics can come away. And we can get the bike down and see inside it. Right, okay, what we see so far is we've got two batteries, two 12 volt batteries in here, a speed controller. And I do see the terminals are actually hot glued over, which I'm, all, I'm happy about because then there's no exposed terminals, but we'll get that stuff hacked and lifted, the zip ties chopped, get this stuff out of the way. There's a metal rail in here that's bolted in down at the back, down here, see that down there, there's another one inside the front, all right, just down in there, and that'll obviously be the holder rack for the batteries, we remove that out of the way, the battery should come out, so let's get to it. Get you zoomed in a bit over here, and we'll do some clipping and snipping. That. Just be mindful you've not pinched the wire before you do the choppy choppy. And that seems to be the zip ties and stuff. Right, next we shall undo the glue from the terminals just an old screwdriver there we go there we go no dramas not even crossing any terminals for some fun behaviour Right, these are screwed in, so these have screws, usually they'll have like spade connectors of some kind, so actually I'll start, I'll get the wire rack, where are we, where are we, where are we, we'll get this frame off first, so we can free up the batteries, it's allen headed bolts, front and back, we'll get that taken care of. Yeah, I'm just taking the terminals off and the screws are really really soft so I've already chewed one right up trying to get it off it was a nightmare so just be careful them they are low quality This one's coming off. It was just one. One was stuck. 
extremely hard. Right, now, now we did remove the bar and I was dodgy, I shouldn't have removed the glue until I'd removed the bar because it nearly touched the terminals and that wouldn't have been so awesome. So we just got to remove the bar, I'm trying not to block your view. Got it in a nice snug place. There we go, there's one out. And we'll get the next one out and get them up onto the worktop. Okay, so we have both batteries. We have them up, we're gonna pop all the little rubber caps off the top of them and make sure all the cells are covered in distilled or deionized water, wow. That's because I dropped the battery just before I picked it up. So yeah, please be wearing your safety goggles just in case that spurts in your eyes like so. Oh, another one. Should really be wearing gloves as well, but... What's a little bit of battery acid between morons, eh? Now, we will refill the cells up, get a voltage reading, and hook it up to another 12 volt battery to trickle charge over and then get the smart charger on it. Right, I don't know if you can see this. See the, the red parts and the white parts of the cells? They need to be covered in water and a lot of them are not so let's fix that we're going to use deionized water and a little syringe i do also have another video on how to replenish these batteries if they don't work by trying to charge them obviously if they're not swollen if they've just been left uncharged they're so dead they won't charge like these are then I will show you how to rectify them. I'm just going to take some water and start filling up the cells until the cells inside are submerged. I'll do that for all of them. Right guys, so I ended up, I had to screw the screws back in in order to give something to grab onto with this. I have a car booster pack here which is a 12 volt battery inside which you could just use another 12 volt just like the ones you have and you're just attaching red to red black to black allowing the trickle to trickle over now it took a few hours and i had to do two batteries so already we've managed to get the energy to trickle up in the batteries it's 11.3 11.9 uh, is nearly 12 so these batteries are already back to good we're going to stick them onto the smart charger they'll take a charge now we'll get them charged up get these caps put back down again so they're not flapping about or falling off and yeah we'll get them back in the bike and see if it turns on i've already just ordered a charger now that the voltage is up and ready to go so We'll get these sealed in and I don't know, we might use something nice and bright like this stuff and we'll get it all sealed up. Right, now we just got to do everything in reverse and just hope we don't blow ourselves up. Well, you can hope I blow myself up, but I'm definitely got fingers crossed that doesn't happen. Right, so we get our battery. It's going to drop in, and this is the first battery of terminals facing towards the back of the bike. And we're going to slip that right up to the back. And we're going to get our second battery here. And we're going to try and just drop that straight in. Mind you're not trapping any wires, because if they get jammed now, with the motion of the bike banging up and down riding it you could bear the wires and short it out so stay safe right 
batteries are in, they're both tested with voltage, I'm happy they're in a good state. So now we just need to find all the little screws and put the terminals back in. Now these are wired in series, not parallel, so it goes negative, it goes from positive to negative. And on the other side, as just as a single positive and a single negative, but you're jumping one side over here, negative to positive. We'll get that done. I would always advise when you open it up and you're not too sure and it's like a big spaghetti mess. It's always good to take a picture before you start. Place mine in. Helps if you have little tiny girly fingers. We're going to have to regroup. I don't know where the other two screws are. Oh, that's right. They're all put back inside the bike because I had no way to grab onto them with the crocodile clips from the jumper booster pack. So I put these in to give them something to hold on to. I'm trying to be quick so that it's not edited apart and you think other stuff has happened when it's not. Now we get our live lead here. Yeah, I just touched it onto that negative right there. There goes your video. There you go, guys. You got... Whoo! Oh, pins and needles. So that's actually a good sign. My batteries are working fine. I just don't know where that little bolt went to. But, ah. Yeah, I need to find it. Whew, that was nippy, nippy. That was nothing like a 9 volt battery, was it? 24 volts there. Uh. Yeah, I'm dropping the bolts. So we'll be back in a second when they get them on. Right, well, we eventually found the other screw. I just got to get this side on. Ah! I keep getting shocks. Maybe it just does that initially when it joins on, but after being zapped, that's kind of spooky. Electrics is not my fun sport. Right. Woo! They're in place and sparking away. Now we'll set up the hot glue gun and fill in, cover over these terminals over here so there's no more of that shady business happening. Okay, so we're just hot gluing the terminals so there's no contact between any metal parts and the battery while anybody's on the bike. Keep it all safe. Splodge it on there. Right, that's done. Now I did take the uh, ignition part apart. It turns out that's got wires going to it. It's on and off and I do not have a key. So I've popped the back out of it, smashed the barrel part that would take the key out of the thing. 
and clip the rest of the ignition back in the back. Now you'll be able just to turn it on and off from the front. I'll show you that in closer detail. But for now, we need to get the support bar back across the batteries again. And just in case it baffles you, it can only really come in from the back, slide along under all the wiring and up to its fixing point. Now, we'll get that tightened in. Okay, so I've stuck a zip tie up just to hold the controller back on again. And we've got another zip tie here. Hold the wires close together. We'll just come in and give them a bit of snippety snippety. Keep them out of the way. Make sure you're not getting any wires while looking in the viewfinder. Not very clever. Right, now we're going to shove the top on that has the battery gauge and see if we can get it to light up. And we should have power. I'll show you this part. Right inside you had a hook clip that was attached to the battery gauge up here. It's going to this clip that we took it off of. So just got to hook these in together. We've got a heavy wind picking up here. Right, that's that connected. Now we just need to turn ignition on and see if it goes bangy bang bang or if it actually works. <sighs> Can't see it. Screwdriver's not big enough. Yeah. Oh yes, we have battery gauge. Whoa! Yeah, it works. It works. Oh, two seconds. Ah! Right, so I'm going to show you guys we for the ignition that was just popped out dropped the back out of it and then took this chunk here with the metal part that was inside it that takes the key and I just put that down on well actually put it in the vise put a punch on the top and just smacked it straight through and then put the other bit back in the back again that was it and now we have a switch that can just turn on turn off on off on off See? So we'll make him up a key that he can just use for himself. Soldered back on the charge tip and ordered the charger that has a three pin connector. It was just dangling loose down the back. I've stuck a nut on here to hold it on just now, but that's not right but either and it won't screw right on. So we're going to have to come up with something else to keep that in place for pushing the charger in. But apart from that, all is well. Practically brand new dirt bike. Let's see if we can get you some wheel turning action here. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, yes. Lovely jubbly. So, 45 bucks plus another tenner for a charger, 55 bucks and you got a 500 quid dirt bike in brand new condition. It's a shame. So in future guys, if you've got a problem with yours or if you've given it a long storage or you've just picked one up and you just can't charge it and your charger's just not recognising it either, that's how you go about fixing it. So, sweet! So, anyway... Thumbs up if it helps you in any way. Leave a comment. Subscribe for more videos. You don't have to. And it's a bit cliche people saying that. But by all means guys. I need to grow the channel. So get the thumbs up. And join the crew. Got lots more projects like this. So Bye for now.